this uh, U.N. General Assembly uh, taking place with uh, only Joe Biden among the leaders of the uh, five nations that hold a permanent seat at the U.N. Security Council. The U.N. Secretary General uh, opening uh, that annual opening of the U.N.G.A. as it's uh, known. Uh, recently at the G20, Antonio Guterres spoke of that club as a dysfunctional family. Uh, this Tuesday, he sounded the alarm even louder. Our world is becoming unhinged. Geopolitical tensions are rising. Global challenges are mounting. And we seem incapable of coming together to respond. We confront a host of existential threats, from the climate crisis to disruptive technologies, and we do so at a time of chaotic transition. Well, for more, let's go to New York City. Joining us is Maya Ungar, UN Project Officer at uh, Crisis Group. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you for having me. Uh, how does it resonate when Joe Biden's in the room, but the others are not? Yeah, I think it's a pretty important symbol that Biden is the only of the permanent five members of the Security Council to actually come to the General Assembly this year. You know, Macron and Sunak um, are in France right now for the state visit of the king, but um, I don't think we were very surprised to not see President Xi Jinping there, and obviously we were not surprised at all to not see Putin show up. But I think it's broadly more reflective on, you know, where the international community is seeing the role of the United Nations as you're seeing these other large multilateral institutions popping up or partnerships such as BRICS, such as, you know, G7, G20, as other important um, markers of international cooperation. I think it begs the question of how long and what the UN can do to remain in this, this state of primary relevance with the discord that you have in the international community. Now, you heard Douglas Herbert uh, uh, quote uh, Volodymyr Zelensky worrying aloud that uh, allies are losing faith. Um, how does a, uh, what's the best way to pitch to that global South? Yeah, I think one of the, the most important ways the UN has tried to pitch towards the global South is by emphasizing the fact that this war has global implications. It might be happening on the European continent, but for example, the impact of the food insecurity crisis coming from the reduction of grain supplies, that has an impact all across the world. And you know, I've been speaking with member states this week, high level officials who have come into town for the UN General Assembly, who have said, you know, even if we're a small country, miles and miles away from the conflict, we're seeing the actual impact here. And so I think the way that Zelensky should be pitching to the global south, the way that um, Ukraine can be orienting themselves to get more support, is a focus on the idea that this, while it is a conflict in Europe, is having global implications and will continue to do so unless um, something really radical shifts. And we heard uh, Antonio uh uh, Guterres talking about a world becoming unhinged, the growing competition between superpowers. We did see on the sidelines the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State uh, speaking with the Chinese vice president. Uh, how are things going when it comes to what was once called the G2? Yeah, um, I think anyone who's following international politics right now knows that there is a quite tense relationship between the U.S. and China. Um, Throughout the past few years, you've definitely seen an elevation in that discord between the two powers. Um, one positive thing that I might note that we saw come out in Biden's speech today was um, his notes on climate change. I think that this is an issue in which not just the U.S. and China, but the broader international community can hopefully come together a little bit more on. Um, Biden talked about his willingness to engage with China and other powers on this issue, noting the spate of natural disasters that have been impacting um, those around the world from Morocco to Libya to China to the U.S. So while there is definitely increased tensions between the U.S. and China, and I don't think that will be turning down anytime soon, um, we're still hopeful that there are small areas of cooperation which can be worked on together for, for the global good.
Maya, it's Doug Herbert here. You know, just curious about the political context here in which Joe Biden was was addressing the, the assembly today. It, it struck me that a lot of the leaders watching him must be wondering in the back of the minds, well, how much longer will he be there to sort of hold up the pledges that he's making and to try to pursue this, this ambition for sort of still an American-led uh, vision of the world? Um, do you think he overcame that? Do you think there's how much skepticism do you think there is among UN membership in Biden's staying power in the presidency? Yeah, I mean, I think with everything that happened during the Trump presidency on a numerous amount of issues um, with recognition of, say, the conflict in Western Sahara, of um, other other kind of conflicts that previous use uh, American presidents have hesitated from doing, there's definitely a concern of a return to a, a Trump presidency from member many member states. Um, I'm not sure that Biden necessarily overcame the concerns throughout his speech. He definitely was strong in his commitment to Ukraine, uh, strong in his commitment to strategic partnership. But, you know, I think those that study the U.S. system and those that understand that there could be a time limit on Biden's presidency and even past that, four years past that, there's a knowledge that the U.S. as a country has um, is a little bit less able to be trusted in its partnerships than some other countries, say like China, who have these long-term commitments. I think that a way the U.S. has been trying to get around that is by establishing like these these strategic partnerships, which will hopefully live on past his presidency. So, for example, in Biden's speech today, um, he noted the kind of infrastructure commitments that um, the U.S. has made, but also that they're working on continuing to develop with their Western partners. Obviously, this is in kind of direct and Implicit relation to China's infrastructure investments around the world, particularly in Africa. So I think while um, Biden might not have really assuaged any large standing and long standing concerns on these issues, I do think that um, by emphasizing strategic partnerships that he will be building, it is um, hopefully, I think his camp is hoping that will help some of those concerns. My own guard, many thanks for joining us uh, from uh, New York City. I want to thank as well Douglas Herbert. Stay with us. Much more to come. Come, more news plus the day's business and sports. You're watching France 24.